Right, has everybody got an order of service and a palm cross or two? Yes, wonderful. Um, hello to people on watching online as well. Um, you're much warmer and drier than we are. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to start the service out here and then after the um, introductory gospel reading we will then make our way into church. Uh, so just take the seats in church as normal. Hosanna to the son of David, the king of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our saviour, to suffer, to die and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. Now please hold up your palms for them to be blessed. God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these palms be for us signs of his victory. We bear them in his name, may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of Christ. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So now we'll very carefully make our way into church. So let us pray for a closer union with Christ in his suffering and in his glory. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility, and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So now we have our readings from Scripture. Roger's going to read to us from the book of Isaiah. First read is from Isaiah uh, chapter 50, verses uh, 4 to 9. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught. 
The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint. And I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Philippians 2, verses 5 to 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. And it seems God. Always on Palm Sunday, the main meat of the service is to hear the entire story of what we call the Passion of Christ read aloud. Now, the word passion means suffering. And as we begin Holy Week, we enter into that journey with Jesus. And so we're going to listen to the full Passion reading together. Hear the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the Festival of Unleavened Bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar, a very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted with the soul? And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you. And you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and the man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him wherever he enters. Say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? 
He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make the pre preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and said, and to say to him one after another, Surely not. Jesus said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated, and said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going over the Father, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet, not what I want. Jesus came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you do not, do not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough, the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. 
Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do you still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, to strike him, saying Prophet, to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You will kill with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl on seeing him began again to say to the bystanders, but again he denied it. Then after a little while the bystanders again said to Peter, But he began to curse and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realised that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the King of the Jews? They shouted back. Crucify him! Pilate asked them. Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. Crucify him! So Pilate wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, such as the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh but he did not take it. And they crucified him, and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was 
nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, and he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, 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 why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This is he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him, saying, Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph and Salome. Those, these used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee, and there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. The Passion of the Lord as you are able. There's something tremendously moving about thinking how this time last year we were celebrating Palm Sunday online at home, we were in full lockdown and we were in solidarity with those all around the world and still people are living under restrictions all around the world and yet our faith keeps going, it keeps us going as well and so we declare together in the words of the creed our faith. We say together in faith, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in one God the Father, who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son, who was slain, for with his blood he purchased us for God from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. And so we stand 
with Christ in his suffering. For forgiveness for the many times we have denied Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. For grace to seek out those habits of sin which lead spiritual death, and by prayer and self-discipline to overcome them. Let us pray to the Lord. For Christian people, that through the suffering of disunity there may grow a rich union in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who make laws, interpret them and administer them, that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who weighed down with hardship, failure or sorrow, feel that God is far from them. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross. Let us pray to the Lord. That we, with those who have died in faith, may find mercy in the day of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Jesus' disciples asked him how they should pray, and he gave his disciples the Lord's Prayer. And often I find if I'm struggling to know how to pray or what to pray, I pray the Lord's Prayer. So as we pray the Lord's Prayer today together, Spend a moment's quiet, just gathering our thoughts, all the things that are weighing us down, the people that we're concerned for, the grief that we've all been carrying this last year. We gather all those things together, knowing that God already knows those things, and we can use the words of the Lord's Prayer to express our feelings to God. once again and if you please stand as you are able. We have laid down our branches as a sign of our penitence. Now as we enter together the week in which we recall his suffering and his death, we take up these palm crosses as a sign of our journey with Jesus. God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die. Let these palms be for us signs of his victory. 
May we ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And the final blessing, let's bow our heads to receive God's blessing. May the Father, who so loved the world that he gave his only Son, bring us by faith to his eternal life. Amen. Amen. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep us steadfast as you walk with him the way of the cross. Amen. Amen. May the Spirit, who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set our minds on life and peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us, those whom we love and for whom we pray, and remain with us now and always. Amen. Amen. And so go in the peace of Christ. Thank you, God.